So to recreate the electro pen, you'll want to get one of these handy flame lighters. Uh, I guess you could use any other lighter with a piezoelectric spark igniter, um, but these are the ones that were actually used in the iGEM project and you know, from my experience trying other lighters, this is a really easy one to actually get into and edit, so it's the one that I recommend. So you can just open it up. And it's just a you know normal lighter. There's control on here for the level of the flame. And then it lights. Um, but we're not using it as a lighter. So steps to take it apart. There's one screw right here. You can just use a screwdriver. Take that out. And next, you'll want to actually remove this red piece. It just slides right off. And then from there, you can start to kind of pry the casing a little bit. It's not the easiest thing, but you can slowly kind of work it. And once you get it, it just kind of almost goes. Almost there. There we go. And there it is. So you can see all the guts of the lighter from here. This is the case with all of the gas. This is your actual piezoelectric crystal that will spark. Uh, you've got the, the gas line up to the tip of the lighter. And then the blue and white wires are the ones that you're actually interested in. So first things first. We don't need the gas system, so you can just disconnect that. And now when you pull the spark, it won't inject any gas into the system. Um, next, what we'll want to do is get access to the wires. So we'll need to disconnect the tip and just kind of pull off like so. Now you have that piece, that piece. Uh, from here, there's another piece holding the tip together, so you just want to take this off. Again, be as careful as possible so that things don't go flying around. So you have that off. The tip can just be folded. You don't need to break anything. And you can pull out all the different components. That. So, and now, if you were just to use this, it would work. So I'll we'll just slide the pieces together if I can. There we go. Um, so. This is one wire. The other one is just at the bottom there. Um, but you can actually clean this up even a little bit more. So since we don't need the gas line at all, you can disconnect it. Just pull it off. There's a flexible rubber hose at the bottom. It makes it fairly easy to attach or detach. Um, and then the only other thing to make this Sort of more functional is to attach a wire onto the blue lead to extend it so that it sort of matches the length of this. But essentially, that is now a functioning electro pen. Um, and you could do electroporation with that. You just need to attach the screw back in to hold it all together, like so. And there it is. I'll do a jump cut to one that I 
added an extra long lead too so that it works better. So that's this one. And that's that. That's the electro pen. Uh, unlike the iGen project, you don't need to do any fancy 3D printing of the case or anything. Uh, you can just kind of use it almost out of the box, which is nice. And that's that. So taking a closer look at heart of the electro pen system, uh, here we have the piezoelectric igniter from an, a different uh, BIC lighter in this case. But you can kind of see there's a well, simple spring mechanism at the bottom here is a piezoelectric crystal and when the, the crystal is compressed it generates high voltage spark um, which in this case is used to ignite the gas in a lighter um, but we can use it since it's roughly the right voltage 1500 volts um, to electroporate cells and introduce DNA into them. So just to give an example, you'll be able to see when you compress. It gives a spark. Um, and that's the core of the entire electropen. Uh, we just use all the lighter housing and everything because it makes operation a lot easier. Uh, just using this would be a little bit tedious and you could <laughs> shock yourself a little bit. So that's why we use the system that we do. The last important component for electroporation is the electroporator cuvette. At its basic core, this is just a vial with two metal plates spaced one millimeter typically apart. Um, so you can load in your sample on top. Usually it's about 100 microliters. Um, and then when you create the electric field across those plates, uh, it'll cause the cells to introduce the, the DNA into them. So in this case, I've attached some conductive tape to the sides so that you can actually attach the wires from our electropren directly. Um, and in the case of the iGEM project, uh, they actually built their own cuvette. Uh, but you can also buy these commercial ones for about $10 or so, and they already work out of the box. You don't have to make sure that the spacing between the two plates is perfectly one millimeter. So that's what we've done in this case. Unfortunately, I haven't had the chance to run a real world electroporation experiment using GFP like in the iGEM project, but that'll have to be for a future experiment and video. So stay tuned.